Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. At the end of the last video, as you can see, we just finished getting level 61 range, and we also got the rune crossbow last video. I was feeding my maples to Spook so that way she could get her fletching up, and she did, and she finished the RCB. And I unlocked broader fletching so I can make broad bolts for me and her uh, eventually once she gets the range level. And now here we are doing Slayer looking like a very cute noob. We just imbued the Slayer helm as well, so we are getting the boost for ranging on Slayer task. And then throughout the last couple of videos, I've been alking these maple longbows unstrung to get magic up. Uh, because I want to be able to cast Super Glass Make, which we can do now if we boost with the Wizard's Mind Bomb. But I think I want to get one more level, level 75, just so that way we have one more level of buffer and we don't have to keep on drinking up the Wizard's Mind Bombs as often. So the plan for right now is probably just train up range doing Slayer and then uh, I'll be alking in the meantime while I'm doing that at the same time so we're not wasting any time like I'm doing right now by talking. And I guess once we get 75 magic we'll uh, start with the super glass making. The timing for alking while using the rune crossbow is a lot easier um, because using the rune crossbow is 5 ticks and alking is 5 ticks. So the cycle is like exactly the same every time. You don't have to like worry about counting ticks or whatever. I mean if you're trying to be efficient. You know because I'm not using an offhand for range I probably should grab the tome of fire if I'm going to be alking because that doesn't like give any negatives for range. Also the, the Shazing Boots 5 are better than the Snakeskin Boots, but I just I don't feel like doing it and getting them right now. I'll get I'll get it eventually. I'll get it later, okay. We have to start with the lowest tier and work our way up. So we're going to talk to the tier 1 soldier. We say we're going to fight them, and then we fight them. And then when they die, they'll drop the pieces of their armor, and uh, each piece is also a new collection log slot, as you can see, one piece at a time. So we have to fight uh, tiers 1 through 5, each one 5 times. So it's gonna be 25 fights to do to work your way up to tier five. See, like if we try to go straight to the tier five soldier, uh, he says you have to own a full set of the tier four armor first. And if we go to the tier four person, he'll tell us to own a set of tier three and so on. So that's why we gotta start with tier one. And there we go, that is the last piece of the tier five armor. And look at the freaking chat box, dude. 25 new collection log slots. Um, and then if we look at the collections logged over here, I guess we had exactly 100 before because now we're at 125. And if you want to take a look at the difference in stats, this is plus three range attack and then the Shazing Boots 5 are plus four range attack. Huge, huge upgrade. Although to be fair, they do have quite a bit more defense. Yo. I'm going to keep this tier 5 set in the bank because eventually we're going to need it for shamans, but for these first 4 sets, they're really not useful for anything besides fashion scape. Some of them actually do look really cool, but we could store all of these sets in the armor case, so that saves quite a few bank spaces. Oh wow, that's 62 range already. It's nice going to train range now because when we were doing strength at level 90, it's so long between levels, but now it's been like an hour or something or just over an hour since the last range level so it's nice that these levels are going by faster i guess but the downside is that training slayer with range or at least with the rune crossbow is a lot slower than using melee but i was thinking about it and like we gotta train range somehow right i was looking at the xp per hour i was getting and even if we were to go to sand crabs and just afk there it would still be about the same range xp um, it might be a little bit less doing Slayer, but overall it'd pretty much be about the same. So I may as well get Slayer XP if I have to train range somehow. Because it'd be really nice to get 70 range so that we could equip Black Dehyde. Uh, we do have a top that we got from a hard clue, but we don't have the bottoms yet. Man, you know what the worst feeling is? Yeah. What the heck? Another Leaf Blade Sword? They're 1 out of 500. And that's the fifth one in 720. Okay, listen, I'm not here to judge other people's financial decisions, but man, he's really enjoying the game. 63 range, 64 range, 82 hit points, 66 hunter, 65 range. Yay, 77 slayer. That's the level for brutal black dragons, which we're not gonna do. 66 range. Yo, 75 magic. This unlocks a lot of things. Here, I'll show you on the level up table on the wiki. Here's level 75. There's just like a lot. Um, and then uh, right now, Spook is still currently mining sand. I think she needs like 4k more buckets of sand. So for now, I'm going to keep on doing Slayer and keep on alking. I mean, you can see we're almost out of alks now, but she told me she put some more, I think she said longbows or she put something in the group storage that I could alk. So let's find out what she put in there. Oh, look at that. 3,200 maple longbows. Oh, nice. I mean, the unstrung ones. I guess she's strung a few of them for me to alk as well. Um, that's really, really nice. Actually, if we keep going with it, 
Uh, that should give us like one more magic level, right? I guess it just depends how long it takes for her to mine 4k more buckets of sand and how consistent I stay with the alking while I'm doing Slayer. I like how I've been here for like an hour or two with the hellhounds just ranging them. This guy logs in, sets up a cannon, kills a couple of them, removes his cannon, stands under me, says that, and then logs out. I mean, is he like talking to himself or what? 67 range? Man, I've hopped so many worlds trying to find nature runes and they're all pretty much like this. Like there's only like 10 to 20 in stock for every world, even like the total worlds and the target worlds. It is Sunday right now though, so maybe we'll just have to wait till the weekend's over. 68 range? Spook doesn't really have much in the way of GP because she's just been skilling and I've been the one doing all the slayers. So give her like 800k GP, which should be a little bit more than enough to buy all the buckets of sand because you have to pay 50 GP each when you buy them from the sandstorm grinder. All right, let's check the group storage and like clockwork, there they are, 14.2K buckets of sand and uh, 2,000 giant seaweed as well. I don't know if that's enough giant seaweed actually. Um, I know I have a little bit myself. I know that's all that she had, but how much do I have? I have 261. Okay, that might be like exactly enough or we might need to do like a couple more runs, but it should be pretty close either way. It's really nice buying Astro runes right now because almost every world has a full stock or at least a close to full stock, which is really nice. Um, the thing about the shop though, like you, you see you can buy nature runes here, but when you buy the runes, the price goes up really, really fast. Well, this isn't full stock, but um, you can see if it's at full stock at 250, it's 50 GP each. And then you can see if we buy a few, the price goes up really fast. But luckily astral runes are relatively cheap. So I'm kind of just taking advantage of the fact that right now there doesn't seem to be a lot of group Ironmen buying astral runes. I guess they're all too busy buying nature runes at the Wizards Guild. But we're gonna need two astral runes per cast and each cast is gonna be 18 buckets of sand. So, I mean, it comes out to one astral rune for every nine buckets of sand. So at this point we have more than we need already, but may as well stock up a little bit. It's funny, I was just thinking of the differences right now. Like I'm the Chad PVMer who just PVMs for money or does Slayer for GP. And then I just use the GP to buy runes versus like the beta skiller who just rune crafts the runes themselves and it's just less efficient overall. Okay, well we have a nice even 3,200 astral runes right here. We started with 800K, so we spent about 250K GP to buy this amount of runes. Not a bad deal, I'd say. And last thing we have to do is just buy a few inventories of the wizard's mind bombs. Um, they're pretty much free and I'll just top worlds buying 12 at a time. They'll boost us to 78 magic and we have 75 right now and we need 77 to cast the spell. So I guess that means we'd have one to two minutes per mind bomb before we have to drink the next one. Doing a method like this may seem like really boring and redundant to you, but for me, it's just so different because I'm not used to having a bank. So it's cool I can like do all these things that I'm not used to actually being able to do. I think we'll do one more inventory. We'll get to 200 and that should be enough. I think it should only take a couple hours. So that'd be like, I don't know, 60 or 70 but I have a few extra just for the future or to be safe. All right, we're gonna hide deposit worn items. We're gonna take out the astral runes, remove the thing there, uh, put in bank fillers, we'll put on the spell filters here. And then the only runes that we need to cast the spell are fire and air. Uh, we have the Tome of Fire, which gives unlimited fire runes for non-combat spells and then the air runes from the air staff, and then it's just two astral runes per cast. For this method, we're gonna wanna withdraw three giant seaweed and then 18 buckets of sand, but instead of having to manually right click every single time, there is a plugin for that. If we go uh, to menu entry swapper right here, go into the settings, turn on the customizable shift click, and then for bank withdrawal, uh, you could set whatever you want to be. So I'm gonna set to withdraw X, which means when we shift click, the default option is gonna be whatever the X is. You can see it's set to just one right now. If I left click, it's one. But when I shift clicked, it withdraws whatever the X amount is. So very quickly, it's just click, 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 and then shift click to get everything that we need. And if you weren't aware at the time of recording this, every single plugin within Runelite, as well as OS Buddy, are fully compliant with Jagex's rules. There's a few different methods for making molten glass. The first method, which anyone can do, is just using soda ash and buckets of sand on a furnace, which is just a one-to-one -one ratio. 14 sand and 14 soda ash gives you 14 molten glass. Once you get lunar diplomacy done with 77 magic, you can use super glass make, and you could also use seaweed or swamp weed instead of soda ash if you want with the spell and you get on average 1.3 times the amount of molten glass instead of just a one-to-one -one ratio. Things get even more fun if you have giant seaweed. Giant seaweed essentially counts as six soda ash and there's a couple methods with it. 
two giant seaweed with 12 buckets of sand gives you 1.45 times the amount of molten glass per bucket, and because you're making less add time, it should always fit in your inventory. Then there's three giant seaweed with 18 buckets of sand, which is what I'm doing and which is what most people do because this is the most molten glass you can get per seaweed, which comes out to an average of 1.6 per bucket of sand. The only downside is that leftover molten glass falls to the ground, which I mean, you could just choose to leave it there and ignore it and let it despawn. Or if you're lazy, you could also just do the two to 12 method. But as you can see, I'm picking it up because we need as much molten glass as possible. Ooh, there's a crafting level 63, 64 crafting, 65 crafting. We're getting near the end here and uh, we need like just a little bit more molten glass than what this is going to get us to. But luckily Spook did a seaweed run, so it should be just enough now. Okay, last inventory and break. Pause. Okay, let's uh, deposit this and we'll take a look at the XP per hour. So it's about 80k crafting XP per hour and 35k magic XP per hour. We did end up getting a couple crafting levels. And then let's take a look at all the molten glass that we ended up making. I think she needed like 22.7k, so... I mean, that's close enough. She could like make some jewelry or something, I guess. Uh, if you're curious about the price check of what it's all worth, that is 2.2 mil worth of molten glass. Cool, so we'll put this into the group storage. Uh, she's currently doing quests and diaries, but I guess whenever she's done with that, she can start making all that molten glass into whatever orbs i guess and uh i guess at this point we can get back to doing some slayer yeah let's let's go back to doing some range so we can get 70 range and equip the black dehyde oh and it looks like this took just under two hours to do going by those xp rates so i wasn't it wasn't really long at all tiers of runecraft xp is going to put us from 39 to 42. you want to know my really dumb reasoning for why i just decided to go do tiers we were really close to 40 runecraft and at 40 runecraft you can make astral runes and I have to switch my spellbook back to the regular spellbook. So I figured that because I'm going there to switch spellbooks, I may as well just bring in the inventory of runes. See, this is the kind of macro-efficient stuff you gotta think about when you play this game. Nice. The Brine Saber! That's a 1 in 512 drop. And uh, how many Brine Rats have we killed in total? Uh, almost 600. You do need this for a Master Clue Step, although the Clue Step is in the Wildy on Lava Dragon Isle, so... A little bit inconvenient, but I'm sure we'll put it to good use someday. You can also use it to kill Lobstrosities, which are a decent way to get seaweed spores, although I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, and then you can also use it to finish off rock slugs without needing a bag of salt. And then in terms of its stats, it's like slightly better than a rune scimitar, so pretty irrelevant item, except for the master clue step. Well, <laughs> there's Brine Saver number two, 655 KC. I guess me and Spook can both build the stash units eventually. I'll just be like, hey Spook, by the way, I just decided to get you a second Brine Saber as well. <laughs> just choose to get it, bro. Oh, the first ever Gargi Boy task. And it's from Konar because it's going to be the 150th task. Oh boy, here comes the money. I don't want to range them though, that would take too long. Oh boy, buying my first rock hammer. Oh, I can't wait to forget you so many times. Not gonna lie, I totally forgot that you had to like manually smash these because it's been so long since I've been at like an early stage in an account. I forgot that auto smash is something you have to unlock. God, just look at the chat box. It's legit like a money printer. <laughs> and there we go again. Well, I think it's gonna be worth it to spend the points to get the unlock. So we'll spend 120 points to unlock Gargoyle Smasher. So this way we don't have to manually click with the rock hammer. As long as we have this in the inventory, then they're automatically gonna get smashed. I was kind of wanting to save up for the herb sack, but I mean, we're, not, we're still not too far off it. We'll get sooner than later. And that is task number 150. We got 270 points from that. Oh, we actually got a decent amount of points now in total. We could buy the herb sack. I'll see what task we get next because I want to make sure that I still have at least a few skips worth of points. First ever Garg task, though, immediately adds 300k GP to the cash stack plus a bunch of other supplies too. And that's level 76 magic. And there it is, level 70 range. We can now equip Black Dehyde, which we have the top for already in the inventory, which we got from a clue a little while ago. Let's make that upgrade. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of other stuff that we unlock at level 70 as well. Uh, looking at the level up table on the wiki, there's all this other stuff too. But yeah, it's a nice, nice feeling. Hopefully we get the Black Dehyde chap soon, but now I am going to bed. Good morning. We have one last thing to do before we end the video, and that is open up these caskets. We have two hard clues, so we have two chances to get the Black Dehyde chaps, and we have a couple other clues as well. So we'll start with the beginner, the medium, and then the hards. 
Okay, please. Ah. Oh, wait, Ancient Core is actually really good. That's our first piece of Blessed Dehyde. And then we got like a almost <laughs> close to matching Blue Dehyde set. But yeah, pretty happy about that Coif though. That'll be good for like non-Slayer task ranging. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, which is linked in every video description. In the next video, we're just going to keep on going with Slayer, keep on working towards 85 for the Whips and 87 for the Tridents. And uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time.